Welcome to Community Crossfire, another point of view. I'm your host, Norman Oliver. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you've been waiting, and it's here. Is that, is that accurate enough? <laughs> I have Pastor Geno Jennings, and what we're going to do is we're going to take phone calls. We're going to take uh, all kinds of questions. I've never seen a more dynamic guy, uh, Pastor. Uh, Wayne Jefferson and I were talking about this, and he said, Norm, do you think you're getting And I called Brother Dan. I emailed or texted him, and he called me back, and we set this date up. So we're going to have a very open, and what I'm hoping, what I'm hoping is we have some ministers call. Good. I'm hoping we have someone from the mosque call, um, someone who probably knows the Bible or the Quran better than I, <laughs> that can ask some really intelligent questions. But uh, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Let's get right into it, because this is Community Crossfire. Mm -hmm. First, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, uh... I came from a very well-disciplined home, mm -hmm. family of eight, mm -hmm. uh, very well-rounded father and mother, mm -hmm. church background. We started pastoring at age 22 mm -hmm. in the, my mother and father basement. Mm. We started with about 12 to 15 people. But before then, I was strongly ridiculed by my former minister who told me publicly, mm. Uh, that the Lord never dealt with me. I told him the different things that the Lord dealt with me about the work that we're doing now. He said, the Lord never dealt with you. He said, in fact, if you leave and I don't raise my hands over you and bless you, you'll never amount to nothing. Hmm. Over the stress, my father uh, ended up getting a heart attack over this. Uh, when we left, we had no place to go, so we started out in our mother's and father's basement. We were there for five years. Mm -hmm. From the basement, we worked in 13 other areas in the country. Wow. The basement was my mother's church. <laughs> okay. It was our headquarters church. Uh, from there, we rented the uh, recreation center of an Episcopalian church. Mm -hmm. And that's where the Lord blessed us to start our radio broadcast. I asked the Lord to give us an hour program on a year's time. And he blessed us with 10 radio stations, 11 radio stations in a year's time and shortwave stations. Wow. Let me, let me, let me stop you right there because mm -hmm. I also saw something where you said you don't have a doctor's degree in theology. No, I never, never went to. I never assumed there was Because everybody's got doctors and stuff now. Uh, uh, school makes students. It takes God to make a preacher. Hmm. Uh, one goes to theology school. When they come out, they're more messed up than they went in. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting you say that. You've had, you, you have a lot of controversial stuff to say about preachers in general. Yes. I mean, you, you, and basically I've heard you say that pimps in the pulpit and mm -hmm. talk about tithing and taking money and riding around. What do you mean by all that? Uh, if you look at church today, church has become the largest multi-billion dollar racket in the world. It racket? It's a racket. It has uh, outbeat the mafia long time <laughs> ago. What make it worse is most of these preachers racketeer behind the name of Jesus. Now, if you look at television and look at the program that is going on today, what do you hear preached? God got a miracle with your name on it. Touch and claim it. And if you look at the so-called prayer line, uh, everyone is getting pushed on the floor. Notice, the preacher, when he lay hand on you, and, and nobody fall down on the floor unless someone is back of you to catch you. And if the Lord is really dealing with you, then just fall flat on concrete and call it a day. <laughs> but if you look at the schemes, uh, bless water. Uh, oil from Jerusalem, mm -hmm. lucky, all, all, all these type of gimmicks. Church supposed to be designed for to develop the people mentally, spiritually, physically, in every manner. And church is not doing that today. Mm -hmm. But you also, um, and ladies and gentlemen, if you just tuned in, we started a little earlier. Uh, we have Pastor Geno Jennings in um, studio, and this is going to be an incredible conversation. You also have some interesting s things to say about the different denominations, different. The Baptists, yes. Catholics. Uh, I mean, Basically, Baptist. my, my, my argument is this. God is one. And if you search the scriptures, all these religions that exist today, you don't find them in the scriptures. And if you don't find them in the scriptures, then who's responsible for their existence? Hmm. Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, non-denominational. I mean, it's like an open buffet. 30 churches in one neighborhood, and everybody come out Christians 30 different ways serving 30 different gods, but yet everybody's supposed to be going through this one heaven. God is not the author of confusion. 
So I, I'm a firm believer that if you focus on the Bible and do it exactly like the Bible said, whatever's not in the Bible, then get it out to church. Mm -hmm. So when I question people about their religion, the first thing I ask them is this, where does it exist in the Bible? Mm. And most times they refer me to what great men started it and how many followers they have. I'm not interested in that. All I want to know is where does it exist in the Bible? If it don't exist in the Bible, then I have no confidence on it. And also you have some um, interesting things to say about women preachers. What do you have against <laughs> women preachers? I don't have nothing against women at all. <laughs> it's just women preachers is something that organizations have adopted. Scripturally, they never exist. For years, churches have tried to make women in the Bible to be preachers. First and foremost, they try to make Jesus' mother the first female preacher. Scriptures never say she preached to nobody. Hmm. Uh, the, they try to make a woman being a prophetess. A preacher. Prophesying is just the foretelling of an event that's going to come, which is given to a man or a woman. In most cases, the preacher's wife is his assistant pastor. They try to keep the uh, church in the family business. <laughs> He's the pastor and his wife is the first lady. They'll let you know right off the back all the money is staying right in the family. <laughs> you, don't, you keep coming back to that. Yes, I do, because years ago, and I'm only 50 years old, I don't know how old you are, <laughs> but when I was coming up, Mm -hmm. The fear of God was taught to us. Right. If you take fear and respect for God out of church, you don't have no church. So if you look at the international mega churches that is functioning today, the fear of God is not being preached. There's only one message being preached, money. Hmm. Money have took the place of God. And for that cause, the sinner don't respect church. The sinner laugh at church. Hmm. You get the so-called Christians, he's in the same club and having the same parties that the churches are doing. I mean, look at it. When I came up, it was said that the church is a light to the world. Hmm. The church is not a light to nobody. The sinner have became to the light to the world. Hmm. If you take note, whatever the sinner want to do, the church mimic it. Mimic it. Mm -hmm. Sinner come out with rapping, church come out with rapping. The sinner come out with exploiting young sisters with videos and half naked shaking they behind. What the church do? Christian music with the same theme. Christian young girls shaking they behind naked. It's, 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 uh, it's just play. Right. But do you agree that the ministers should have some kind of salary? They should be compensated. Let them get a job and go to work. <laughs> the Bible said if you don't work, you don't eat. What the preachers have done, they have took the pulpit mm. and made it business. That's why you see them. Uh, you see Benny Hinn, uh, these international fellas, they, the $10,000 prayer line, the $50,000 prayer line, it isn't practically every preacher before he go off the television. So that's not a job then? No. I mean, I need to know this. No. When God make a preacher, God don't make a preacher for you to pay him. Who paid Jesus? Hmm. It ain't a preacher walking on this earth that's bigger than Jesus. It's not a preacher on this earth that's better than Jesus. He didn't get paid a salary. So why do these priests got to get paid a salary? You got me confused. So where did tithes come from? Tithing was designed back in the Old Testament, was for the Levitical priesthood. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a salary. It wasn't something that you paid them. Uh, when the, the tithing that was given uh, to the priests for ministering and for the work, it wasn't just with money. Mm -hmm. It was just in land. It was land also. It was part of livestock also. See, tithing should be used not just if you're going to help the minister, fine, mm -hmm. but you got people in the church that may be poor. Mm -hmm. That they, may need food. That may need clothes. You do realize we have preachers watching this show that might be good. Oh, I hope they are watching it. Because, see, the reason why a lot of preachers don't like us because we take the fun out of their life. See, it's like a, a robber. No robber love a policeman. I've never seen a robber run after stealing and hug and kiss the cop. <laughs> so, it, and so a lot of preachers retaliate against us, and they say that we're mean and all that stuff. No, we just call a spade a spade. The sinner have no respect for church, and you don't blame them. If you turn on practically every television program, they all got the same message. God got a miracle with your name on it. God want everybody to be rich. Go out there and touch that car and claim it. So the way the preachers have it is like this. God will bless you based upon the amount of money you give. Hmm. Well, if God only going to do something for me based upon my money, 
What about if I don't have no money? Right. And Jesus taught us the poor you have with you always. Hmm. So I don't want a God who only can do something for me when I got money. Mm -hmm. Because if I need money and don't have it, then I need to <laughs> seek God for it. You, you know, another interesting, and, and you can see I've been studying you mm -hmm. a little bit. Another interesting topic that you're not afraid to go after is um, dealing with gays in the ministry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. And, and you, you talk about them in the choirs and the church and all. What, what, what's your problem with that? Homosexuality is something that the Lord has spoken clearly against all through the scriptures. Ever since Barack Obama had an interview with CNN and agreed that there's nothing wrong with same-sex marriages, and he said what caused him to reach that conclusion was a discussion he had with his daughters and with his wife that caused his mind to change. After he agreed there's nothing wrong with same-sex marriages, many of the black preachers in America who used to be against it now got on international television around the world and say, oh, well, being that Barack eyes came open, well, we're starting to revisit same-sex marriages. Now, think of it. You got a mustache and I got a mustache. <laughs> what is on your body that's made for me? Right. You understand what I'm talking about. Absolutely. <laughs> it, 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 whoever thought that we're living in a time where two grown men will have to argue over whether they want each other. Bible says that God made the woman for the man. And if you look at the churches, homosexuality is accepted so much. And one reason why they accept it is because the preachers know that the homosexual money is green. It's like the straight man money is green. So yes. therefore, they refuse to speak out against anything. And if you turn on practically any religious program and look at the choir, right. and 99.9 .9 of the men on the choir, the musicians, and preachers in the pulpit, yes, just as gay as they can be. So, would you not accept a gay person in your church? Oh, yes, we will. Okay. Oh, there are people that come to First Church that's struggling with it. Okay. We don't throw you out. Okay. But we don't condone your conduct. You don't throw the crackhead out, but you don't condone the crackhead conduct. I got you. But you try to work with them to help them to overcome the uh, evil that they're dealing with. But what the churches are doing is sanctioning it. They are endorsing it. It's two different things. It's like having a blood brother who have a drug problem. You try to help him. Mm -hmm. You don't condone what he do. Mm -hmm. now, because you don't condone what he do, that don't mean you don't love your brother. Right. So the homosexual conduct, uh, they, many of them speak out against me because we preach against the act. So they say, oh, he's homophobic. I'm not homophobic. I love everybody. Mm -hmm. But there ain't nothing on a man that's made for another man, gotcha. regardless of how you look at it. Mm -hmm. Barack did not uh, institute the law of marriage. God institute the law of marriage. Mm -hmm. But because that the homosexual epidemic has spread it like wildfire, look at the different uh, government structures here in America. Each state practice is bowing down to same-sex marriages, same-sex marriages, same-sex marriages. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing what kind of publicity you get when you come out the closet. Right. When a person say, I'm out the closet, everybody wants to interview him. And uh, like this one athlete, supposed to be the first gay athlete, he come out the closet, he called Barack. I'm preaching against homosexuality. Barack don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got, let, me, let me move to another subject because I'm sure people want to call in. You said something. Now, this was interesting. Christmas. You know about Christmas and Easter? <laughs> yeah, see, I've been, I've been doing my homework, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything that's centered around Jesus is supposed to be written. Okay. The scripture says this. Jesus says, search the scriptures, for in them you think ye have eternal life. The scripture says, whatsoever things were written aforetime was written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. There have never been no type of documentation in the scriptures, in the Bible at all, that tell you Jesus was born on Christmas. It never was there. There have never been the scripture nowhere in the Bible that even mentioned Jesus rose on Easter. It never exists. 
That's, it goes to show you how long a lie travel. You know good and well there's no 500 pound man in a red suit coming down your chimney. Not in Philly and not in Delaware. And live to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to do that. So you just can't make up something right. about Jesus. If you're going to say something about Jesus, it has to be true. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and this is why I encourage parents, if you love your children, tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. There is no scripture. Yes, I know Jesus had a birthday, but the Bible didn't say when it was. And if the Bible didn't say when it was, I just can't take it upon myself to conjure up a date and say when it was. So December 25th, we just No, it was just something that men popped up with. Hmm. It never been in the Bible. It never exists in the Bible. So when preachers get up and say, this is the day our Lord was born, tell them to prove it. The Bible says prove all things. You can't tell the people to believe in Jesus, and then you getting up lying about Jesus. Hmm. If you're going to tell people something about Jesus, you should be able to show it in the Bible. All of these preachers, they get, and notice how they make Jesus all the time. He's a little white pudgy baby laying in the manger, mm -hmm. which is historically incorrect. Hmm. Jesus came from a region where the people was of color. If you exaggerate, if you look at Nazareth, Nazareth in modern terms is considered ghetto. Nothing prestigious, nothing suburb. Nazareth was a rundown place until the Bible, that's why the Bible says, can anything clean come out of Nazareth? But Jesus' skin color, which is irrelevant, but it was very relevant to the European. This is why the European always made all the hosts of heaven white. And one reason why they made the hosts of heaven white, so your ancestors and my ancestors can always look up the white people with the mentality that if I look up the white people, I'm looking up the Jesus. So therefore, it gave me the mindset of the white being superior and my color being inferior, which shows you how bigot preachers hmm. have took Jesus and made him a symbol of racism to suppress folk that was in color, folk that was of color. So religion have played a very wicked role hmm. through no good, rotten, low lives that called themselves preachers. Hmm. I did you say low said, lives. Yeah, I, I thought you said that. Yes, low lives that <laughs> called themselves preachers. That's why if you look at, which, uh, let me make an example. You have the Episcopalian church, mm -hmm. but then you have the, the African Methodist Episcopal. Mm -hmm. How did the African Methodist Episcopal come about? It was because the white brothers and sisters who was Episcopalian did not allow the black brothers and sisters to sit among them. So what did the blacks do? Separated themselves from the whites and started African Methodist Episcopal. Mm -hmm. But what kept the segregation? What kept blacks and people of color looking down at themselves was because society have helped this white Jesus mm -hmm. in front of them. And today, to my sad regret, many people will believe a white brother preaching before they would a black brother preaching. Hmm. Even amongst our own people, they would take a light-skinned preacher, mm -hmm. many of them, mm -hmm. before they would listen to a dark-skinned preacher. Well, I wouldn't care if you yellow as butter, clear as water, as black as the street. You only can tell two things, a truth or a lie. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, if you just tuned in, we have Pastor Geno Jennings, and we're going to open up the call lines in a few seconds. Um, let me ask you, um, this, this is not even, you got, you were mad about tattoos. What, what, what was that all about? <laughs> the you scriptures see? speak against put no carving in your flesh. Print nothing upon your flesh. And it is written, I the Lord have said these things. Your body is the temple for the living God. Your body is not a billboard to advertise folly. Your body is not a billboard to publicize foolishness. Your body is made to respect God. God made your body. He says your body is the temple of the living God. Now think of it. If you're supposed to represent God, why are you out half naked, tattooing yourself, putting all these letters and the initials all over yourself? Look at our women. I remember a brother wrote me from some part of America. He said, Pastor Jennings, it is hard to find a decent woman to marry. Either she got tattoos all over her or a grill in her mouth. <laughs> and then you got to consider when you get old, that tattoo ain't smooth like it used to be. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and so I, I teach our brothers 
You know, when you go out in public, go out looking like a prospect, not a suspect. Mm. You know, you don't want to go out with tattoos of cross, having a tattoo of a cross or a tattoo of Jesus. That don't mean nothing. Do you have a problem with the uh, crosses and the Jesus um, emblems that people have? Well, first and foremost, the image on the cross, who told you Jesus looked like that? Hmm. Who told you Jesus was white skin, blue eyed and blind hair? Who told you Jesus was tan skin and wore dreadlocks? Mm -hmm. See, being that you never seen Jesus in the flesh, hmm. then you have no business trying to make Jesus look like something that you haven't seen because you can make a lie quick as you can tell one. Right. Let me ask you another question. Um, wow, you, you got my mind. <laughs> because I also I've been studying, so I've been, um, you have a problem from, like when they talk in tongues. You say, guys, just talking. You know, and, well, it is. Ah, you said the dude going to have an <laughs> asthma attack or something you were saying. No, what I'm speaking of, if you look at preachers today, mm -hmm. the preachers are entertainers. Most of your preachers today are just entertainers. They're not preaching nothing with substance. Hmm. People come to church, they're not getting nothing but amusement, entertainment. That's why you can go to 99.9 .9 of the church and the preacher say, hold a neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, something. Or he'll say, the Lord just spoke to me, and he'll go off in the tongue. The Lord spoke to me, especially after the collection. <laughs> after the collection is done, the preacher closes his eyes real tight. The Lord just spoke to me just a minute. There's $5,000 more in the audience. And the people are suckered by it. Listen, Jack, I'm from the hood, man. And if you're from the hood, you know a hustle when you see it. Mm -hmm. The hustle have came out of the hood, hid behind the cross in churches. Hmm. And some of the preachers are the biggest hustlers that are out here. They use the name Jesus to rob the people. They use the name Jesus to bamboozle the people. They use the name Jesus to con the people. They use the name Jesus to manipulate the people. And because people in churches are not allowed to ask questions. Right. See, this is why we encourage viewers, ask your pastor questions. If you went to a church and started questioning your pastor, your pastor lay you out. He has said you're being disrespectful. Or he has said, don't question God. And I tell the people, if you, pass, if you question your pastor and he tell you don't question God, look at him and tell him, you ain't God. I'm questioning you. Mm -hmm. Because if people are financially supporting these organizations, they should have the right to question these preachers about anything and everything. Did, did any of your teachings come from the Nation of Islam? None of my teachings came from the Nation of Islam. Someone people, told me to ask you that. When, I, when people first saw me on television, they thought I was a Muslim. Right. You know, because for some reason, I didn't know a bow tie had that much power, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they see a, a, a young black brother, if he's outspoken and, uh, and clear, shave and wear a bow tie right away nation. I never was in the nation. I never uh, came up in the nation at all. Uh, but there are many brothers and sisters that are with us who was formerly in the nation who was, uh, who was Sunni. Uh, so there are many. But no, I, I never was in the nation of Islam. Let me give you a quick plug. Um, Pastor Jennings is going to be opening a church here in Delaware very soon. And he's coming. <laughs> so he wanted to come to Crossfire first to bring the word. Um, let me ask you, because sure. the phones are starting to ring, I'm, I'm going to answer the phones. When I, I watch your church, it's separate. You have the women on one side. Yes. Now, what's, what's symbolic, why is the that? The only reason why we do that is for discipline reasons. We get, it isn't something that's done by force. Okay. Uh, we want all women, whether you in church or not in church, to be respected when you come in church. Mm -hmm. Some women come in, they're not dressed properly. You know, something cut down too low, dressed too short, a split from the bottom to the top. And I don't want brothers to be distracted by what's around them. Because the truth of the matter is, every man come to church certainly ain't got church on mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so for discipline reasons, I don't want brothers, wives, or daughters being disrespected either. Okay. So for discipline plenty of reasons we separate the brothers for, and the sisters and have them from that perspective. That's all. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the phone number, we're going to open up the phone lines. The number is 661-4468. 661-4468. If you have a question, and let me say this, this is, it's cold in here. I mean, Comcast, I mean, what the hell is going on? I mean, that's, you know, this is like total disrespect. I mean, it's total disrespect. I'm sorry, Rev. Can I say hell? I'm sorry. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? I had a question. Go ahead. Yes, uh, I've often heard uh, Pastor Jennings speak on 
um, you know, if, you have, if you're in a false church, to leave that false church. But how does he feel when you have those preachers that are able to, you know, work miracles and things of that sort? Wouldn't that kind of put the people at a disadvantage? The book of Scripture says in the seventh chapter of the book of Matthew, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom. Jesus said many in that day will talk about the miracles and things that they have done. But Jesus said in that day he will profess, I never knew you. So regardless of how many uh, so-called miracles is done, the miracle is not going to save you. Hmm. Teaching do two things. It either will deliver you or damn you. After a miracle is wrought and your eyes come open and you're no longer blind naturally, but now you see. But after you see and you start looking at that woman in a manner that you should not look and that woman is not your wife, then having your eyes open, it doesn't help you any. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Yes. Hello. Hello. My question is for Pastor Jennings. How are you tonight, Pastor? Fine. Fine. I think that he does preach from the Bible. He's preaching scripture. However, I have never heard Pastor Jennings say God is love. God loves you. It seems like he's always preaching like hell and brimstone. And if you do this, you're going to hell. And never, you know, God will forgive you, and he loves you, and he accepts you where you're at right now. Could he answer that for me? Yes, I will. Uh, sister, the problem is most people have one perspective of love. When I was coming up and if I was hard head, my father, when he whipped my behind, that doesn't mean he didn't love me. So because we preach truth and tell people the truth directly and straight up, we are preaching love. The scripture says God is love. And also the scripture says God is the word. So if I'm preaching the word, I'm preaching love. If I'm telling you the truth, I'm preaching love. Because a preacher may quote or use the term love doesn't mean he love you. Because a preacher may use the term heaven, that don't mean you being taught the right thing to get you there. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Uh, good, good evening, uh, Norman and Pastor Jennings. Yes, sir. <laughs> or at least when I tuned into him, he used to preach from the original, uh, what we call the 1611 King James edition. And then he brought in the books of the Apophical, and he accepted them as uh, authentic, uh, I believe they were scripture. Um, what, what brought that, how did he come to the conclusion um, that they were um, inspired books of God? When a many, a lot of ministers and um, uh, haven't been able to confirm that the, uh, <clears throat> the topical books are indeed, uh, not that they're not good writings, but they're not the inspired word of God. And I wonder how he came to that conclusion that that, in fact, was the inspired word of God because he's teaching it now. Okay, hold up. Let's let him answer. Uh, first and foremost, brother, the if you I often use a quote, uh, that an older gentleman used, history is best qualified to reward all the research. Uh, go back and check your history and find out who are who were the ones that put the 66 books in the order that they're in now. It was the Catholic Church. The so-called quote-unquote apocrypha, and I say so-called because it was the Catholic Church that coined that phrase. Apocrypha, they said, mean the unknown. Those books were in existence when all the other books were in existence. It was the Catholic Church that took it upon themselves to make a decision for you and I to tell us what books should be used and what books should not be used. Hmm. In fact, if you go to the book of Samuel, even Samuel make reference to the book of Jasher. But yet in the 66 books, you don't have the book of Jasher. The scriptures even points to uh, Enoch's testimony. In the book of Jude, which only have one chapter, it has a specific quote of the testimony or the prophecy of Enoch. You can't find the prophecy of Enoch in none of the 66 books. But Jude had to get it from somewhere. So if he didn't get it from the 66 books, where did he get it from? So this is why uh, years ago, I mean, I have a Bible that was written, printed probably in 18 or 17 something, given to me by an elderly gentleman. 
And all those books, uh, which is called the Apocrypha, are in there. In fact, the Ethiopic Bible, which, considered, which is some consider the oldest Bible out of Ethiopia, all those books are in there, and nothing in there contradict uh, what we're so familiar with as we say the 66 books. Yeah, thank you. You have a question? Absolutely. Um, grab the mic. Anybody, you got, go, get over, go over there. We have a, a, a live audience here, so we're going to take a, a couple questions from people here. And if you have a question, the number is 661-4468, and I'm asking for a heater. <laughs> Am I the only one calling? Are you calling? I'm fine. Bro. Good evening, see, Pastor gotta... Jennings. Yes, sir. Uh, welcome to, uh, to Wilmington. Thank you, sir. Um, I... Hold up for one second. Could you put the camera on him while he's answering the question? So it won't look like it's a ventriloquist uh, show here. <laughs> Pastor Derek Johnson of yes, uh, Joshua Harvest Church. Pastor, I'm sorry I missed you at Warner uh, Junior High School last time you were here. Yes, I was sir. traveling, but I very much wanted to be there. Let me say from the onset, I'm not a denominational pastor. I founded a church, a very successful church here, after 15 and a half years in prison. I, I, I accepted Christ in prison, came home, founded the church. I say that to preface my remarks by saying I'm not popular with the preacher uh, with, with the Sanhedrin, so to speak. Mm -hmm. However, um, I, I agree with many things you say and, and, and study you often. However, I take exception, very honestly, to some things based on study. Mm -hmm. I want to stop, rewind, and play and go back to some things you have already asserted and, and uh, take uh, exception to without armorage. One being the notion of women, uh, preachers, um, you highlighted Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then, if you would, and I'll give, give you all of them so you can respond to each point that you made uh, for me. Uh, me. You highlighted Mary. I'm thinking of the Samaritan woman, though, who after her encounter with yeah. Jesus, Scripture does say that, in my mind, she preached because it says... She went into the town she came from, and many were saved because of the saying of the woman that she went back. She basically, in my mind, became an evangelist. Come see a man who told me all I ever did. Is this not the Messiah? So there, I would say, is the first woman preacher okay. that I saw from my study. That's the first question. A, can we take oh, one at a time? Oh, absolutely. First and foremost, the scripture says this. I testify unto every man to hear the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life and from things out of the holy city. First and foremost, there's a statement you keep making. You keep saying, in my mind, she preached. Your mind don't count. My mind don't count. God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my way your way. The only way I would believe that she preached if the Bible said that. Another thing you did, you added to the scriptures. You said the scripture says she went and told the people and they were saved. The scripture never made no such statement. No, no, I said the exact, the exact scripture reference says, and many believed on him, okay. being Jesus. Thank yes. Because of the saying of the woman. That's the exact quote of scripture. Right. That's when I said in my mind that's preaching because if a person go, uh, 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 is speaking to men about him mm -hmm. and they come to believe on him mm -hmm. because of that saying, then a, a, a brass monkey is preaching if well, he brings let, somebody to let Christ, us, let us as far as I'm concerned. the terms that the scripture said. The scripture says that she testified. So if a sister can talk to someone about Jesus and that individual believe, okay. that doesn't mean the sister preached. Okay. If the scriptures did not say she preached, I am not going to say she preached. Okay, so you mean the word, you, you, you I'm mean I'm just going to stick. The word. I'm not going to add preached. nothing. I'm going to okay. leave it just like it is. But does, it, does the scripture you re reference also say, he who takes away from this writing one tittle, I will take his name away from the book of life. Meaning, okay. and I'm not suggesting in any way that your name be taken away. I'm sincere in my okay. question because I, I, I struggled with women preachers coming in and then that, that scripture among others. So you, you, you've answered. Um, there would have to be Greek or, and Hebrew 
uh, uh, interpretation that I'm not, I don't know okay. about the word, but I, again, my belief uh, of her <coughs> preaching is based on that. Let's move on to uh, the second, uh, the first point you made with respect to paying preachers. Um, I've never taken a salary from my church. Uh, as such. However, and I believe you referenced the scripture that says consider the priest uh, by saying they were cared for. Norman uh, pointed out mm -hmm. that, you know, well, well he used the word, word pay, but the fact of the matter is uh, that they were cared for. In fact, God orders the people okay. to take care of the man of God. Mm -hmm. So are, are you saying that uh, you yourself in no way are provided for I got a job. by the church? I got a job. It, this is true, but are you saying you are in no way cared for by the church? I work. Church don't got to pay. The church don't have to take care of me. I got seven kids. Okay. And I'm, I'm not looking for the church to take care of my seven kids. Absolutely. I got a job. I work. I take care of my family. The Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. Even the Bible point out the Apostle Paul occupation. Absolutely. And said he was a tent maker. I have met men that told me straight up the only reason why they got in the pulpit was because they couldn't find work. Yeah, yeah. Well, so they got in the pulpit. There we agree, but I, I, I'm trying to, I, I want to know if you believe that or if you if you believe that or you're saying that scripture does not support the idea that the pastor should be cared for when when the scripture says consider the priest well when you when, use the term the preacher should the pastor should I don't be, mean in a pay I don't mean in a paycheck kind of way I'm talking about what you were talking about all right about. so this what is what we call I, this parsonage is what I'm asking for yeah clarity. what we call parsonage what we call uh, caring for I'm a full-time pastor meaning okay. 12 to night if 2 in the morning and the entire Wilmington, so what is your explanation knows. of being cared for? What do you mean? Because when I you mean, say cared for, yeah, a whole I don't lot mean, of I don't mean, I don't mean support my children. I mean care for the priest. I mean that that man's uh, um, uh, gas, transportation, etc., to go to their homes two o'clock in the morning. The, the the things that that priest needs uh, in order to be a priest. From because, that perspective, yes. for the church to help them and transportation and doing the Lord's work, fine. Absolutely. So, which is okay. a very, uh, so when you use the term care for, that has a very broad statement. Absolutely. Because uh, a lot of preachers feel as though when you say cared for, that means buy him cars, that means buy him houses, right. and things of that nature. Final question, I'll let other, Hold on. Uh, Hold on. others get in. I'm going to come back to you. Let me take a couple calls. Hey, you know, welcome to the call. I think this guy got a question back there. Hey, you know, welcome yeah. to the show. Thanks. Yeah. That's a good question. Good evening, question. Norman. How you doing? Like, how you doing, Pastor Jennings? Fine. How about yourself, brother? is getting ready to learn a lesson and go to school. He directly preaches it straight from the Bible and the way it's supposed to be preached. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, brother. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing, Mr. Norman? How you doing, Pastor Jennings? Fine. How about yourself? All right. Um, question. I want Mr. Jennings to ask Mr. Derek. You know, you got so many preachers now today that He's talking about women preachers. A lot of them, they let, them, they let women preachers in for, for money-wise. Also, they don't even speak against homosexuality. Mm -hmm. why, why don't they do that? Is he asking? He's asking him to ask me. But I agree with him on those things. I, I agree with him on some things. I don't know why other preachers don't speak against any particular sin. Um, I think it's... Hello? Don't worry about it. He knows full well that what I stand for. Yeah. Um, I agree with Pastor Jennings. I agree with the caller, though, as my brother, because I love him and, and I say what I say to, to his teeth, so to speak. I believe that the language of love that our gay, homosexual brothers and sisters need Yo, to hear from turn us. Turn your TV down. That message of transformation and the possibility of change. I believe that that is is more important for me to get across to get them in as opposed to have them uh, not not receive the gospel at all. Okay. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Yes, uh, uh, thank you, Norman, and, and, <clears throat> and hello to your, to your guest, Pastor Jennings. Yes, sir. Um, Of the, of the scripture, of the gospel, of the Bible as well. 
because it does say that we have to believe not only in what was sent to us through our prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, but we have to believe in what was sent before, meaning the, all the scriptures. Now, in the Bible, it speaks that, it, 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 and I'm paraphrasing, of course, it says that we were, that, that we were first called uh, Christians in the city of Antioch. Mm -hmm. And am and, and I understanding that correct to mean that during that time to be called Christian was, a neg was, was something negative uh, and uh, they weren't called Christians at that time. Well, can you add some clarity to that? And I'll just, I'll just hang up and listen. Thank, Thank you. you. His quotation of the scriptures in the book of Acts of the Apostles, they were first called Christians at Antioch. Being called a Christian by others was something that was frowned upon uh, because Jesus was frowned upon. They sped upon him. They made mockery of him. Uh, they tried to degrade him. So when they first was called Christians at Antioch was because they saw the followers or the disciples of Jesus acting like Christ. But Jesus never called his own followers Christians. Hmm. They, he, Jesus never called his followers Christians, nor did Jesus come here starting a religion called Christianity. Oh, wow, I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, I mean, explain. Yeah, yes, for men. Okay. Have, hold, hold up for one <clears throat> second. All down through the Bible. Uh, Bible scholars, preachers, whatever they want to call themselves, had took phrases out the scriptures and coined religion. A good example. You have the word apostle in the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's a person. But then men took a religion from that and called it apostolic. You had John, the one that baptized Jesus. He's called John the Baptist. John the Baptist meant John the Baptizer. That was his occupation. That was right. his work. Right. But men start a religion called Baptist, naming it after John's occupation. Uh, so you're you, saying Baptist is? It's never been in the Bible. There's no religion that's called Baptist. Uh, you so have been going to a Baptist church, and you've been going to a church that not even scripturally exists. <laughs> <laughs> It don't even no. exist scripture. Hold, hold for one second. This is kind of interesting. Uh, Christianity is a man-made religion. There's not a Bible chapter verse that exists in the history of the Bible of a religion called Christianity. It never exists. Men coined that phrase from the word Christian. So I've been hoodwinked. You've been bamboozled, hoodwinked, <laughs> led astray. <laughs> How you doing? Welcome to the show. <laughs> hey, good evening, Norman. Good evening, Pastor Jennings. Good evening. Hi. Um, I've been waiting for this night since I've heard of it. Um, <laughs> I'm a little older than you, Pastor Jennings. I'm 54. That's all right. And I was brought up in the air that, you know, we read the Bible. And so now that I'm older and I got saved, I had tattoos, but I had gotten them before I got saved. Right. So Understand Romans 12 and 1 says, Beseech you every brother, and you know your body is a temple. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, I understand you, and I'm, I've been saying this because I go to church for it, get my spirit filled because I believe being with other believers fills my spirit. But then I get to hear the preachers and they, they interpret the Bible to their own lifestyle, and that bothers me. So I leave the church, then I go to another one, and I encounter that so much. What I like about you is that you do talk about what's in the Bible. Everything that you said is so true. Half the things that we are being taught and believing, there's not in the Bible. And that's what I've been having problems with for so long. I can't wait to get to church here. You will have a member of me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, hey, sister. my friend back there, you have a question? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, First, I'd like to say, uh, you know, good evening to everyone. Uh, evening. Pastor Jennings, I've been following you for quite some time now. Yes, sir. Um, I'll make it real quick. I have a, a barber who's a, who's a member of yours, and um, I grew up in the um, a local church, and I, I haven't been to church in a long time because I've been watching your service on YouTube, mm -hmm. and I haven't been able to uh, get to your, your service, so tonight was a blessing for me to be here. Glad to have um, I have a couple of questions. Um, one is, <clears throat> where can I get the... E how you pronounce the the Bible that you that you preach out of? Uh, well, there we're, we're printing some more up now. Okay. We, we got large demands internationally. Okay. And secondly, um, on YouTube, uh, I lost the service that you were speaking on about Eve. Um, 
you were speaking about how, whether it was actual food or not that she ate, uh, and what she received at that time. <laughs> and I haven't been able to get back to that service because I haven't found it. Yeah. Uh, and my last question, my last statement slash question is, um, uh, for a living, I teach the martial arts. I teach security and mm -hmm. uh, law enforcement. And uh, towards the end of the show, I'd like to show you what I can do, what I've done for local churches as well. Good. I'll be glad to see. Yes, sir. Uh, in reference to Eve, what I was teaching is this. For years, the public has said she ate an apple. Mm-hmm. Bible never said what the fruit was. Never. Bible just said she ate of the tree, she ate of the fruit. History, preachers, Bible scholars said she ate an apple. See, they added to the Bible. Hmm. It is so many things that have been taught for years, but because members in churches are forbid to ask questions. Mm -hmm. To my sad regret, church goers are some of the most ignorant people when it comes to the Bible. Mm -hmm. We go to the Bible, we go to the church, Bible closed, <clears throat> and we sit and look at this fella, ran and raving, hooping and hollering with the organ playing behind him, mm -hmm. and nobody asks questions. So <clears throat> if you've been taught that two plus two is five all your life, mm -hmm. And somebody come back and tell you, look, two plus two is really four. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how true that is. It's a hard pill to swallow, swallow, especially if you've been lied to for 15, 20, 30, and for the last 40 years. So what I was saying was, uh, when the scriptures talk about Eve ate of the fruit, the scriptures never said what that fruit was. Men have said it was the Bible. The scriptures never said it was the Bible. So this is why we encourage people. And this is the mistake that's made when men go to seminary school. Seminary school will teach you all that type of stuff. Mm. And what seminary gives you, what the Bible gives you, is totally different. So when you talk about fruit, it has a broader meaning. Mm -hmm. You know, it has a much broader meaning than something you just Could have been a banana. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Know, welcome to the show. Yes. Uh, I was going to ask Pastor, uh, what do you say to people who uh, don't, who don't, uh, who don't follow Jesus? In other words, the Bible says you must come through Jesus to be saved and to know the Father. You must come through Him. So, what do you say to the Muslim who believes in Muhammad? What do you say to the Hindu who believes in uh, whatever they believe in? Have, the Scriptures say you must come through Jesus. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. So, what do you say to all, all these other so-called religions who uh, don't do that? Okay. Hold on. And, and the number again is six six one four four six eight. If you just tuned in, six six one four four six eight. First and foremost. God only have one way in the scriptures. The Lord says, be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God is holy. The open buffet of religion, Baptist, Protestant, non-denominational, Lutheran, Catholic, Pentecostal, Apostolic, the list go on. You will never go to the Bible and find out one. Seriously? You will never go to the Bible. Jesus taught us to be what he is. Jesus, you don't read where he was a Baptist. You don't read where Jesus was non-denominational. You don't read where Jesus was Pentecostal. You don't read where Jesus was Lutheran, Episcopal. You don't read where Jesus was a Mormon, going around knocking on people's doors, claiming he the elders. You don't read where Jesus was a Jehovah Witness, carrying comic books, interrupting my breakfast. You don't no, read that. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's what the Jehovah Witnesses carry. They carry the Watchtower as a comic book. It's a religious comic book. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, again, I'm uh, telling the people, look, if you're going to serve God, then do it on God's terms. Don't do it on the terms of your pastor. Mm -hmm. Don't do it on the terms of your religion. Don't do it on the terms of your organization. Do it on the terms of the Bible. If you do it the Bible way, you won't go wrong. So when Jesus said to come through him, the question is, how do you come through him? To come through him, you got to come through teaching. Mm -hmm. I've heard you call out guys, because you call them out by name. Oh, yes. T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, Benny Hinn, uh, Joel Austin, the cotton candy preacher. <laughs> You know, candy preacher. Where you get that from? Uh, he don't hurt nobody. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's look at the Bible. Okay. <laughs> Whenever God sent men, whether you read the Old Testament and New, 
those men, when they went into a kingdom or a country, they didn't pacify the people. They didn't go to play with the people. The men was warners. All down through the Bible, God sent men to warn that country, warn that kingdom. And the objective of warning them was so they can escape whatever judgment or wrath that God was bringing upon that people. These men ain't warning no one today. What these men preaching today, these, the prophets and the apostles didn't preach. Everywhere these men travel, T.D. Jakes and the rest of them, what they teaching? Mm. Money, prosperity plan. Uh, you know, you, the $1,000 prayer line, $5,000 prayer line. Benny Hinn come and blow on you, and the first 10 rolls fall out. Now, I mean, who will be that dumb to believe that God, it is written, God don't behave itself unseemly. Hmm. See, so I, I really cannot detect whether these things are godly or not if I don't know the scriptures. This is why we labor to teach the people. Proper teaching can cause you to identify what is right and what is wrong. The Bible says this, hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. What I'm striving to do is to teach the people exactly what's in the Bible, which causes us to stop going along with things. So are you angry at some of the preaching, preachers? Uh, I'm disgusted at the preaching. Okay. I'm disgusted of it because you got sincere people, mm -hmm. sincere people who are victims. Mm -hmm. I have a sister-in-law, God bless her heart, and uh, let me show you the way these preachers con. A friend of hers invited her to a meeting. And this cat got up and said, the Lord told him, if you want to lose weight, write a check tonight, I believe it was for $500 or 5,000, whichever it was, my sister-in-law friend wrote the check. Mm -hmm. Why is God concerned about your weight? The only weight that God is concerned about on us is sin. Hmm. That's why he said, let us lay aside every weight of sin. But it goes to show you how the preachers manipulate the scripture. See, when I came up, the big time shysters was... Uh, shysters? Yes. <laughs> the big time shysters and conners was uh, Reverend Ike. Mm -hmm. And but some before my time, Daddy Grace and uh, who was it? Father Divine. Mm. <laughs> now you got the other uh, international hustlers, uh, Creflo Old Nickel, Old Dollar. So you, call, you call them hustlers? Oh, sure. Anytime. Well, let me get a call. Do that. How you know? Welcome to the show. I want, I want to take a call on the hustle How you know? Welcome to the show. Yes, I just want to say, Norman, that you have a very good show tonight, and I would like to ask Pastor Jennings, what's his take on apostolic faith? Okay, thank you. Thank. Apostolic is the name of a religion that men have took from the term apostle. Uh, apostolic is not a religion that's in the Bible, yet a lot of their teachings are in the Bible, but they just have the wrong label. But many of the strict standards that the apostolic churches have had for years, mm -hmm. a lot of them don't have it no more. And the apostolic, one of the most toughest apostolic preachers that lived before I was born was Bishop S.C. Johnson from 22nd and Street. That's what Street. I was asking about. Yeah, Bishop S.C. Johnson, who came from Bishop R.C. Lawson. Our grandparents went there. Yeah, many of the old timers came up under Bishop S.C. Mm -hmm. Johnson. Bishop S.C. Johnson was strict, mm -hmm. very hardcore. But a lot of the subjects that we deal with today, he didn't preach back then. And homosexuality, you probably won't ever find one tape of Johnson dealing with homosexuality because the time was different. Also, didn't he, um, wasn't he against being on TV and all that? Yes, he was against being on television. He preached against television. Okay. Uh, he wasn't allowed to be on uh, television. Uh, you couldn't drink coffee. Okay. You know, things of that nature. Well, when you look at it from a health perspective. What, what, what about, what about wine, drinking wine? I mean, I, I mean, when you had the uh, communion and all that. Well, that, that? that that's, I say communion. Is that the, communion. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, but it has to be uh, drank the right way. Okay. You ain't not, gotta, you not, ain't, like, not like me. Uh, uh, no, not like you. <laughs> In other words, you, you should not leave the communion table forgetting that she was at the communion <laughs> okay. table. Let me take a call. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take a call on that one. I know. Welcome to, the, welcome to the show. Yes. Hi, Pastor Jennings. I would just like to know what you think about uh, divorce and remarrying in the church. <laughs> 
God only purpose for you to have one wife. The Bible plainly teaches us in the seventh chapter of the book of Romans that the man is bound by the law and the woman is bound by the law as long as her husband lives. But if he be dead, then she's no longer bound by that law. What good is a preacher having a man and a woman standing in front mm -hmm. and going to tell them to death do you part, but yet you getting all these husbands and wives and ain't nobody dead. Hmm. Remarriage and divorce, adultery alone have contaminated the churches. How in the world is a preacher going to tell you he's preaching an unadulterated gospel and he got a second wife and his first wife living? He's living in adultery. Mm -hmm. He can't preach an unadulterated gospel and got another wife. He's living in adultery. It is written, happy is the man that condemneth not himself in that thing they, that in which he allowed. If you look at the churches today, you'll find many of the deacons, more than one wife, many of the trustees, more than one wife, the bishops, more than one wife. And the reason why a lot of preachers don't preach against it because it, it will offend his staff. Mm. And he's scared to lose members. What about the uh, Muslims who have more than one wives? Uh, it doesn't make a difference to me who have it. Mm -hmm. The law of God says one wife. Hmm. Religion may give you more than one, like the Mormons. Uh, the Mormons give you, why, well, good night. I believe Joseph Smith or Brigham Young had about 30 or 40 something wives. Oh, good. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? Um, I got a quick question for uh, Pastor Jenkins. Um, why in the church do they represent the cross and not the fish when Jesus came with the sign of the fish and not the cross? Constantine came to conquer the people with the cross. Can you answer that question for me? Thank you very much. First and foremost, history took it upon themselves to use the fish as a symbol. The scripture never said Jesus used a fish as a symbol to represent him. Uh, the cross represents suffering, but history come along and convert far as the symbol of, uh, instead of the fish, uh, then they took up the cross. The only thing that Jesus wants you to focus on is his teaching. The fish is the people, and the people's being caught through them by the word of the Lord. So don't worry about fish, fishies. <laughs> don't worry about crosses. Follow Jesus' teaching. When Jesus said, take up the cross and follow me, that means follow his lifestyle, follow his teaching, and follow what he stands for. Don't worry about the historical sample of a fish or a cross, because that's not even what Jesus' interest at all. How you doing? Um, welcome to the show. We're going to um, take as many calls as we can. Sure, no problem. Because we got about nine minutes. All right. How you doing? Welcome to the show. God bless you, Norman, and God bless Pastor Dennis. I believe in both of you because you're outspoken and you're telling the truth. God bless y'all. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. <laughs> How you doing? Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you. Go ahead. Good evening. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we, we can. can hear you. I'm just calling in because on behalf of uh, Gino Jennings being on your show tonight, that people here in the state of Delaware or Tri-State area, whatever you want to call it, will be blessed. They needed this because of what all has been going on in this city. And Norman, when I see you, I'm going to give you a big hug because guess what? You made the show tonight. Thank you very much. Yeah, you. we have been bombarded with a lot of crime here in mm -hmm. the state of Delaware, especially the city of Wilmington, and I think that that's what she was alluding to. This is something that, uh, this is why no subject is taboo with us over there. Right. And so many people can identify with what we're teaching. Right. Uh, it's so many men just come straight from the hood, off the streets, mm -hmm. who refuse to go to anybody's church and have no confidence in religion. But it's amazing how they tell people, oh, I'll watch Pastor Janice, or I'll go where Pastor Janice is preaching. Mm -hmm. uh, the crime that is taking place not just here in Delaware, but abroad. Mm -hmm. And many of the churches, the preachers, many of them, are afraid to address it. I'll give you a good example. In Jamaica alone, mm -hmm. Kingston is the capital of Jamaica. The violence, as they say, is off the chain. Right. Well, a government official reached out to me, because in an area called Clarington, where the violence have exceeded Kingston. Mm -hmm. He contacted preachers throughout Jamaica to come to Clarington and address it. All of them were afraid. Hmm. They wouldn't do it. So he contacted me and asked me, will I come to Clarington and address them? I said, sure. You get the place, I would address any subject of crime that you want. He said, how much you charge? I said, nothing. 
I, you, I come free of charge. We will come there free of charge. We go somewhere and preach. We don't get paid. I don't want no offering. I don't want no money from you. The Apostle Paul said, I'm after you and not yours. I don't want none of you on. Do you have a problem with preachers being um, political figures, uh, politicians? Uh, I don't have no problem with the preacher being a political figure on except. And the reason why I say that is this. King David was a king. A king is a political figure. Okay. Solomon was a king. Uh, as a political figure. But the difference between them then and the preachers now, those men fear God. The preachers today, many of them that are political figures, they let politics dictate them. So therefore, there are certain things they won't say. If my political belief will contradict God, then I should denounce that belief and pledge my loyalty to God first. Hmm. See, it's just like, I don't believe in homosexuality because the Bible's against it. So therefore, I'm not going to vote and uh, condone it just because okay. we got a black president. I see what you're saying. You understand? Yep. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hello. Yeah, hi, Norm. I, how you doing, Norm? Hi, Pastor uh, Jennings. How are you? Just wanted to say that I, I just wanted to say tonight that Norm, thank you for having Pastor Jennings on your show tonight, because a lot of people do need to hear the unadulterated truth of God. The man is a blessing because he has courage, and he has uh, the 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 fortitude to stand up and speak the truth. What he's saying it, that is going on. I hope that a lot of people are watching tonight because. This is a real serious problem in the church, and he's dealing with the most important thing that you can lose, and that's your soul. I just wanted to say this to Pastor Jennings. You're right about it. <laughs> <laughs> Got a question over there, brother. Thank hey, you, sir. Hey. <clears throat> How you doing, Pastor Jennings? How are you, brother? Um, I got a question about context. I think, um, do you think that sometimes um, the Bible was written in context to certain things? Um, three, three things that stuck out to me that you said today. Um, you said uh, anything that's removed from this book, that was in Revelations. Wasn't that specifically for Revelations, not the Bible? Um, second thing is you said Paul said that all Scripture was given for reproof. Um, there was no Bible, so what scripture would he be referring to? Um, and then the third thing would be um, the women being silent in the church. Wasn't Paul actually writing about a problem that was going on in Corinth at those times? No, not at all. History said that Paul was writing about Corinth at that time. When the Bible says, I testify to every man to hear the words of the prophecy of this book, uh, the prophecies was written that you had the prophets that prophesied long before John came along. When he said this book. This book is dealing with all the contents of the scriptures. The scriptures, though. The scriptures, the Bible says this, all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God, everything. You can't take one scripture and then ignore the other scripture. All of it is divinely inspired. And what men have done, they choose the scripture of their choice of what they want to obey and what they don't want to obey to try to make it fit them. The scripture is not designed to fit us. We have to make modifications in our life to fit it. Hey, hold, hold, hold for one second. Pastor, we got one minute. Yes, So sir. we got like 60 seconds. And I want to thank you first for coming on. Thank you for having because, me, brother. Did you want to say something in 20 seconds, Pastor? Yeah, 20 seconds. I just I want to say everything that, of course, it is difficult to disagree with you, Pastor, because everything that you say is rooted in truth, but isn't the Bible, in conclusion, uh, uh, such a great work that it's not only been manipulated, it's been used to justify slavery. Yes, it has. Uh, everything that's been said is, in fact, subject to yep. interpret interpretation. Christmas, for instance, Nimrod was born on the 25th of December, or at least history says so, and and, and, and certain things were done to offset the evil that was done, thereby you overcoming evil with good. we got 30 good. seconds. So, 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 so in conclusion, just do you think that, and we certainly need more of you to do this, that there has to be some kind of recognition and respect for other people's positions. Oh, yes, you can recognize and respect their position as long as their position don't violate the book of principle. We believe it's just like the laws of the land. We recognize and respect the laws of the land as long as those laws do not disagree or contradict God. The first law and the first position that should be recognized, revered, and honored and respect is God himself. And everything else has to fall under that. Thank you. Hey, you got to come back, right? Oh, most, most definitely. No, I'm not going to let you back. They're going to oh. kick me off the air. Oh, no, whenever you want me, let us know, brother. Well, he said he'll be back because I see the phones are still ringing. We had, I got all kinds of texts and stuff, but I appreciate it. And I want to say, um, Brother Dan, tell Brother Dan thank you. 
man. <laughs> I most certainly will. Help, brother. Thank you, guys. Hey, hey, man, how you doing? How I you most certainly will. This was good, right? Hey, well, hey, I enjoyed myself, brother. Appreciate the time. Whenever you want us, let us know. Yeah, uh, we got to figure out when you're coming here, though. Uh, basically, we have a big meeting coming up, I believe, is in March. Okay, we're still on. Okay, let me know, man. I I'll pop it up here. <laughs> good. Man. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. <laughs> we out of here like Vladimir.